Today I would like to share with you my fascination with the Pythagorean 345 triangle. It does have its history in early India and China, so it's one of the gems of all mathematics and I want to show today a little bit more esoteric or secret information that's not common about the 345 triangle. Just for those who don't know, um, the Pythagorean triangle is the, is the question if this is three and that's four, what's the length of the longest side? So we, they worked out that the square of the two short sides, three squared is nine, four squared is 16. When you pick up all these tiles, nine plus 16 generate 25 tiles. And this creates a 90 degree angle, angle, which as a builder by trade, we need to know this 90 degree angle to generate the three, four, five triangle. So today, um, there's three parts. There's going to be part one is the Pythagorean triangle hidden in the, the square. So here's the square and I've divided the square into five units. And this again is a tribute to some great mathematicians before us. Uh, my, my colleague and friend, Robert Lawler, who wrote Sacred Geometry, he first wrote about this in the 1980s. And he, he has this diagram here. He has this little diagram here that we're going to reproduce and it's it's also showing the cover of um, a gospel from the Linda's farm where they use the 345 triangle for design so we're going to blow this picture up and it also looks like um, I've blown this diagram up so that you can see what we're doing there's a five by five grid and the secret to this diagram is we're going to do three we're going to look for that midpoint the midpoint on this side here and with three diagonals we're going to construct the three four five triangle and you can see there's that critical point here the 90 degree angle so let's go through it step by step um yeah so th th this is actually available on the internet you can see the other authors are you working with this but the one i'm going to show you in part two is a secret it doesn't exist on the net or in any book and it's done with curves so let's just get this one done so I'm going to need a ruler and I'm going to start off with a five by five grid. So part one here, we've got a distance of five units. So obviously this is also five too. Um, what's important is that I need, we're going to emanate from this point here. We need that point. We also need the midpoint. So if this is one, two, three, four, five, half of five is 2.5 or half. So we need that point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my first diagonal line. So I place my ruler there and I just do a nice strong line. So that's one, one diagonal. And we're going to study the length of this in a minute. And from this point here, I want to go to the midpoint of this side here, which is two and a half. So then I'll put that down and I go across here. And in one swoop, you can see where they intersect here. They intersect here at 90 degrees. This is important. This, this 90 degree angle, um, according to ancient um, legends with the elder race, they believed that the 90 degree angle was a phase shift of consciousness and that they could come in and out of dimensions. They could enter and exit out of a dimension through this 90 degree tilt of awareness. So we need this 90 degree angle. It's also part of the golden ratio to understand this 90 degree. So before I draw the third line here, can you see, um, I'm going to count. I'm just going to count. I'm going to go across there. That's one. This is two. This is, that's another th three. And this one here is four. So this, this length here is four units. Let's check how long is this one here. I, I sort of come up, I go, there's a one. So this is one coming up. This section here is two. And this is the third one. They're all one unit. So if this is three and that's four, according to Pythagoras' theorem, this distance from there to there, which I'll draw in, has to be five units and we'll check it. So, okay. So let's just check. So if I come down here, that's one, two, three, We've got one, two, three, four, five. So this distance is also five. So that's five. This distance is, this distance here is four. And that shorter distance here is three. 
So um, I'll just I'll just go over that. There's the three. There's the four. And that's the five. So here we have the three, four, five Pythagorean triangle generated from straight lines inside a five by five grid. And just one more thing I wanted to show you about that is that I, I did specify that this grid is five by five, but just for now, I'm going to call it one by one. I'm going to call it a unit grid, one. So that's if that distance is one and this distance is one, um, and we were to add, we were to we want to measure this length of this line here. I'll do it in maybe a, a green. So if I want to measure this line here, or or any of the three diagonals, and knowing that the knowing that this uh, this length here is one, can you see that if I've got a length of one here, we have another right angle triangle, and with the right angle triangle, I can measure. I can determine that distance now because if I know that that's one and this distance here is a half because remember that remember this point was a midpoint so I've got enough information now to say that Pythagoras theorem says um, one squared plus a half squared equals x squared so this hypotenuse we want to know that we would say that x squared equals one plus a half squared is a quarter and one plus a quarter is five on four and so x equals the square root, so x equals the square root of 5 over 2. So I've written it here, this, this distance here, root 5 over 2. If you divide 2.236 and halve it, the, that distance here, if this is 1, this distance is going to be a bit more than 1. It's half of root 5, which is 1.118. And I've written extensively about this harmonic of 0.118 because if we, if we have um, a square and I was to draw a circle, imagine I was to draw a circle around this square, right? You can see that there's a square inside the circle. So if this distance is one, if this distance coming up is one, what's the distance from the edge of the square to the curvature? Because this is like, the, the relationship between heaven is the circle and the square is the earth. So that gap there between the straight edge and the curve is called point one one eight. So this is so that whole distance one point one one eight is this is one of the square. So that's that distance is one and the gap between the worlds is point one one eight. And I'm really excited about this because when you add 0.118 to that half, so the half plus the 0.118 gives you 0.618. So this fascination that we have with the golden ratio, 0.618, which is the reciprocal of phi, has a lot to do with the gap between the circular knowledge and the square base. So this sounds a little bit esoteric, but I just it's critical to an understanding of the depth of what mathematics and geometry is giving us. It's a hyperdimensional language of the highest order. And the reason why I want to talk about the 345 triangle, that I believe that when it's constructed properly and applied correctly, that this is a highly tuned instrument of the highest order.